We're in part three of my Math for Carpenters series and we're going to get a little more into detail about estimating the math that it takes to figure out everything beforehand to be able to quote properly, do takeoffs, stuff like that. Now over here, if you haven't watched all our videos, just quick, part one was just an overview and how to square a building with two methods. Part two was just roof pitch, manipulating and rise over run, going into a little bit of raft or math, not crazy, but you know, figuring out your slope gain factor to determine uh, how to cut rafters, stuff like that. Now we're going to get a little more detailed and, uh, and then part four is even more, but I won't get into that because if you've watched the whole series, you're sick of hearing it by now. Here is a house that I just bid here just recently. We'll zoom in on that. Bidding this house was a good exercise for me. I realized how much more money it is for a house when you have a ton of gables and it's basically your soffit area your soffit lineal feet the area of your gables the complexity you know doing you're essentially siding a wall but you're on a roof so you have to be careful not to shred the shingles and how much of an added cost that is so you can see all the math that i did to figure out i needed to figure out soffit areas for siding and my roofing area so you can see that by that photo we have a 40 by 60 building we're going to keep it simple just a simple gable end two, uh, two foot overhang or 24 inches this is the plan view so i'd be 40 feet by 60 feet is my building and then a two foot overhang that's called a plan view when you're looking from the top down and then an elevation view is just looking at it straight on and then you can see we have a 10 foot high wall and my pitch is 7 over 12 so 7 rise for every 12 run roof area this probably the simplest is take the area of the building as if you're looking on, on a flat so on the horizontal view or just a simple plan view so we have 40 feet plus 2 over here plus 2 over here so it's 44 feet times 60 with 62 64 times 64 equals I'm not all fancy like those other guys I didn't pre-figure this stuff out we're doing it real 28 16 square feet and I always like to show my math that way when I go back on a quote I, I can actually double check me like okay you did it right code I can trust this I can just order off of this okay so that's based if your roof is flat now we have to just times your square footage by your slope gain so your slope gain factor will run through that again so slope gain factor is your rise over your run so 7 over 12 is our pitch squared plus 1 squared equals and then once you get that equals number, you have to take the square root of that. So 7 divided by 12 equals 0.5833. Squared is 0 0.340277. Plus 1 equals, because 1 squared is still 1, so you just keep it as 1. So it's 1.3402. Now... I'm still in the square mode, so I have to square root it to get it back to real life. And I'm not a math teacher, so I don't know the proper terms, but who cares? Okay, so slope gain factor of a 712 is 1.5 7, 1.1577, 1 1.1577. Okay, this is what this is what goes on in my head when I estimate. I'm going to double check. 7 divided by 12 equals squared plus one equals square root one point one five seven seven okay to figure out how many shingles you need or anything like that you go twenty eight sixteen square feet times one point one five seven seven is thirty two hundred and sixty square feet actual shingle area tin area whatever now, there's another way to figure it out too, is, let's see, actually let's double check, let's see, let's see if I'm doing any good here. 
let's do a little bit throw a little Pythagoras theorem in there and we'll double check our math so another way is remember if you watch the other videos this is a triangle this is 40 feet half from here to here is 20 feet so it's 22 feet overall so then we just manipulate rise over run so we go 7 over 12 equals x over 22 so what's my rise 22 times 7 so you cross multiply and divide is 12.833 feet got to keep everything in feet or everything in inches keep it all the same so then you can see how I made little notes on that drawing 12.833 times 22 so if I do Pythagoras theorem now I can figure out the, the length of that so a squared plus b squared equals c squared so 12.833 plus 22 equals blah 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 so we're going to do this 12.8333 squared is 164.694 plus 22 squared plus 484 equals and then you got to take the square root boom 25 sorry for my chicken scratch 25.469 feet okay so that's the length of this 25.469 feet then you times it by your 64 you're building 60 to 4 so take that times 64 equals 1630 basically so that's your area per side so this area 1630 square feet there's two sides 3260 math is always right so that's estimating roof area let's just quickly run over you know your soffit whether you do your soffit lineal feet so you can calculate that and also the area of your walls if you're calculating exterior siding okay so soffit area or soffit and fascia lineal footage so this will help you with your J-trim soffit or fascia is I always like to figure out my gable ends separately and then just add in the eaves because the eaves are easy because it's just a horizontal dimension. There's no slopes involved. So I shouldn't have erased that. So 7 over 12, 22. Remember how we got 22? Half the building is 20 plus 2 is 22. 22 times 7 equals divided by 12 is 12.83. there then we do Pythagoras to figure out the lineal feet of your soffit fascia and J trim you can use a lot of the same figures so that's why I always just jot them down and so I kind of rewrote it because I got crazy erasing but we got here my total roof length so 25.469 I don't know about you I hate when guys estimate it right down to the wire and you have a four inch piece of roof edge left over one piece a little chunk of soffit and you got to scramble everything else like I don't like doing that it's not worth it um, so let's just go 25.5 feet there okay so if I'm figuring out lineal feet I just go 25.5 so I have four of those I have a gable end one two three four gable ends 25.5 times 4 is 102 feet and then what I would do is I just go 60 to 4 64 times 2 is 128 
230 lineal feet. And that'll just help you. We won't get into the specifics, you know, just adding little extra waste here and there, but that'll help you estimate that. And then with wall area, same thing goes, is you just change your math a little bit because now you're not incorporating the overhang. So to figure out your wall area, okay, I know I'm 10 feet high. So let's just say it's 10 feet to there. 10 by 40, 400 square feet. Okay. Then we manipulate, we change this because now our run is only 20 feet. What's our rise? 20 times 7 equals divided by 12 is 11.6667 feet. You get a triangle. Well, you actually have a gable end. Now, all you do, you know that this is 11.667 feet and this is 20. But if you can visualize it, if you take a rectangle and split it, it's two triangles. So really, the area of a gable is just 20 times 11.6667 is 233 square feet. So 233.33 square feet. That's for the full gable because you went 20 times the 11.66 here, which is a rectangle. If you wanted to figure out one side, you just go back to your math from school. You just divide it by two. So I hope that helps. You know, for anyone who's experienced, obviously that's elementary, but you know, this math is is simple like I said but it's helpful it gives you that edge and it makes your life a lot easier in the field and in theory when you're quoting and that kind of thing so that's part three stay tuned for part four that's it for now thanks for watching if you enjoyed the video please subscribe to our YouTube channel or check us out on some of the following